Hello, welcome to Abiding Life Studios. I'm Noah Wells. Today I have with me Shay Wells. Hello. Hello. And we also have Steve Reinhardt with us. Hi, Shay. Hi, Noah. It's great to be with you. Great to be with you. Um, yeah, so we'll dive right into it, but um, we're going to dive into Steve's testimony. I guess it's, I guess it would be testimony and your walk with Jesus, right? Uh, what, or is what, that what a testimony is? Well, that is a good question. I don't know. You know, we and when I was a young Christian, we learned like you got to learn how to share your testimony. And it's like, what the heck's a testimony? That's like what you do in court or something. Like you know, I testify to tell the whole truth. <laughs> and uh, and is and anyway, but so yeah, I think it's how we come to in in our circles we use that word and how how you come to know the Lord, right? Okay. Yeah. Is is, is what that means. And uh, so yeah, I'd be happy to share that with you. Please do start whenever you want. Okay, well, I'll start back when I was, um, uh, well, a little kid. I we were raised. Um, our our family we thought of as normal, and had we had lots of fun and did uh, lots of activities together, and um, lived about a block from my grandpa and grandma, and we're very close with them. Um, yeah, I have two brothers and. Uh, my mom and dad were busy working all the time, so we got our us guys, in a sense, kind of raised ourselves. And I, I was uh, the oldest, so I was always put in charge when they would leave home to go to work or party or go skiing. Uh, they did all sorts of fun activities. Uh, they would look at me and they go, "You're in charge. You're the oldest. You're in charge. If anything goes wrong, it's your fault, <laughs> and we expect you to be in charge." So. Uh, that was not the best I was not the best person to put in be put in charge of two younger brothers and they have all sorts of horror stories uh, for me because like if I'm in charge and I got to keep my younger brothers uh, in check so they don't go you know spilling stuff on the carpet or mm -hmm. having pop having pop wars we, we always had a lot of pop in our house soda pop and, and they you know we're not going to have a soda pop fight in the house or throwing darts or, you know, all sorts of things that mm, boys do, shooting arrows, BB guns. Uh, I, I, you know, the easiest thing for me to do is just tie them up. Uh, <laughs> and, and so my brothers uh, were kind of, in a sense, tortured a lot growing up by me. And they'll, they have all sorts of good stories about things that I think are funny, but they still don't think for some reason are funny. Uh, and, you know, like uh, my Anyway, I have a lot of those kind of stories. So we kind of raised ourselves. We were, we had a lot of fun growing up. We didn't grow up as Christians. We weren't raised Christian. We didn't go to church. I went to a church a couple of times with our next door neighbors who were Lutheran. And I went to vacation Bible school, which kind of backfired on me at the Lutheran church because I got bloody noses all the time growing up. And I bled all the way down the hallway running for the bathroom. And those really mean and vacation Bible school ladies made me go get paper towel and clean up my whole mess through oh, man. like the whole length of the school. Uh, so I didn't really get much out of vacation Bible school other than how to clean up blood drops. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, but uh, at the same time, I, when I did get to go to church with them, I enjoyed, I enjoyed that. I liked putting my money in the plate and, uh, and I've, I had a like a spiritual inkling. I wanted to. Uh, we had people around us whose house burned down one time, and it was like, oh my gosh, are we we need, we need to invite those people over. Hmm. As a little kid, uh, I was inclined that way. As I became older and became a teenager, I became less so. Um, really got into outdoorsy stuff and uh, graduated high school. And out right after high school. Well, one of my friend's uh, brother had a um, tumor in his hip, hmm. and uh, I was friends with their family, and he was went up to Fitzsermons Army Hospital and to have hip surgery and have this tumor cut out and bone grafts and all sorts of stuff, and the whole family was very upset, and they, uh, through that experience, uh, they had come to Christ 
and to realize that they they really wanted a personal relationship with the Lord. And uh, at that time, start they started going to the Nazarene Bible, not the Nazarene Church down here. And um, so I went with them a couple times, but and but I went up to see their son up at Fitzsimmons Army Hospital. And uh, uh, he he was in a they had wards of just hundreds of guys laying in there, and I started talking to this guy next to him as an old black guy in his 80s who was from Leavenworth, Kansas, named Mr. Rab. And he had a Southern accent. I could hardly understand him. And uh, he said, uh, would you read my Bible to me? And I said, sure, I'd be happy to. He goes, because I, I can't really see too good, but I, mm. if you read my Bible to me and I want you to read this particular passage. So he found the spot because I have never even picked up a Bible before. Mm. uh and uh so i flipped it and, and i and he and so it's like these are words i don't even know how to say so i'm reading the story of the rich man and lazarus to him and i don't know how to say lazarus and there's a and so he's trying to talk to me about afterwards and i didn't understand a thing i said he goes there's a, go a great gulf in that story uh the rich man dies and uh he goes and stands before the, the lord and Lazarus, and Lazarus dies in anyway Lazarus is a leper poor leper who gets his reward and the rich man is cast out uh anyway so Mr. Rab's message to me and in there he says there's a great gulf this is King James Bible there's a great gulf fixed so there's like this giant chasm a giant gulf fixed and he's saying that he's speaking Mr. Rab language there's a great gulf there's a great gulf fixed and i was like what what's a great guff he goes you know a guff what's a great guff a great guff is fixed and i said well, what's right is it broken what's wrong with it like what's a great guff fixed mean and he basically he's trying to explain to me that there's a gulf between me and god which was sin mm -hmm. and that i uh, had the opportunity that christ had died for me to bridge that gulf and and bring me to him and that really pretty much went over my head until years later when I finally read it and and it clicked, you know, it's like, oh, that's what he was trying to talk about. It's like, <laughs> it had a sense to me at that time. And, and, and just prior to that, um, I had started to read the Bible or the New Testament and I'd, I'd read a little chapter and I, and because we didn't have any Bibles or we didn't grow up as Christians, the only Bible we had in our house was a, a, a little tiny wedding bible and a little white bible that they give to brides on their wedding day that my great uncle gave to my mom and that was the only bible we had in our house so i grabbed that bible it's king james and i'm reading through the new testament and this and uh, it's partly how i developed the vocabulary is i had read a word i'd read a sentence and not understand a thing about it grab the dictionary and look up the words that were in it because it made like zero sense I couldn't understand that thing for, so I was read the, I'd read Matthew, I'd go back and I'd read the, you know, the dictionary to try and figure out what the heck's this, what's he talking about? But through that experience, I came to realize, I read the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew and it was like, oh my gosh, who is this Jesus? Hmm. He is not like the guys I've seen in church. He's not like the, the Christians that I've met. He's not judgmental. He's you know, he's strong and he's direct and he's you know, cuts through the crap and, uh, and loving and talks about loving your enemies. And nobody I've heard ever talked about that in our family. We held grudges. It was important to hold a grudge. Mm. And uh, it's like, who is this guy? So I read, I, I read a, like a chapter a day. And, and then that night, I did, that summer, we were kind of I was moving to be a hippie kind of and that summer uh, every night I would sleep out under the stars I decided this summer I'm going to sleep out under the stars the whole summer long I don't care what the weather does I'm gonna throw a sleeping bag out there I'm gonna sleep under the stars and so I slept under the stars and at that time in our lives my brother Chip loves uh, hawks and raptors and he had gone out and he has his hawking license his, uh, and he had captured a, a baby owl and uh, 
a fruginous hawk, which is kind of like a red tail hawk, about that size. Hmm. This baby, and then Chip got a girlfriend. Oh my gosh. So the bad part was um, he is hawk and al still were there but chip's mind and body were somewhere else and so i ended up taking care of these things a little bit not not nearly as good as chip did uh, but i uh, so this al and i and the hawk and i became uh, buddies and we really actually became close and this hawk and the owl would stay up in the tree all day long and then uh, because i was sleeping outside at night I had really long hair at that time. At midnight, almost at, almost on the crack of midnight every night, so that, that summer, that owl would swoop down out of that tree and land on my head. Hmm. And I was laying there on the ground and uh, wake me up. And then, and so during those nights when I'd wake up, I'd look at all the stars and I started to just wonder and sense that things are so much bigger than me, so much mm -hmm. that there's got to be something more. There's something more, so so much bigger than me and my life. And uh, I felt like a little speck of dust in the whole cosmos. And and so through that time, I, was, I you know, I really came to realize that I'm I'm reading the New Testament and I'm out there experiencing that those stars. Uh, and, and like this, there's a psalm, and I don't remember exactly how it goes, but it says basically the, the stars are witness of me. The stars, like, speak of me. And, uh, you know, that, and so that's when I actually believed. I think I believed that. I didn't have really a clear understanding of a gospel message, so that might be a hiccup for some people. But for me, it was real where I came into touch with God. And uh, I uh, and the Bible, and I started learning more, uh, and and then um, I went to that Nazarene Bible Church with my friends for a while, and met a bunch of college kids there because it was a college, and uh, and they were super helpful and loving, um, and then shortly after that, Barb and I. I got married. I'd been writing her letters about all these things that I was experiencing. She was living out in the desert, studying big desert bighorn sheep. Hmm. And uh, she's a biology major. And so I'd send her these letters and she found out that I believed. And she told one of our common friends, she goes, oh my gosh, that's Steve. He's become a traitor. He's a <laughs> traitor. You know, he believes in Jesus now. And uh, because we were pretty adamant uh, atheists. You know, when when my my granddad growing up, he he was my best buddy after high school and was my best man in my wedding. Mm. Uh, he, uh, you know, we were talking one time about you know, some guy who had become a Christian, and uh, he goes, "Oh my gosh, we, you know, he's just like putting this guy down, and you know, why would you ever want to do that? We're atheists and we're proud of it, mm. and uh, so that's you know, kind of." And Barb was kind of the, the same, cut of the same cloth growing up. Uh, so, but after, but after that, she met one of her friends, uh, Elena, and uh, Elena just sent her a card. <laughs> and it said, <laughs> Barb, Jesus is for you. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> huh. And Barb listened and and was really interested so and uh, and she believed so uh, then then um so so that's kind of it in a nutshell for how i came to know the lord <laughs> well one of the things that i wanted to point out from that whole i mean it's just you had said that even as a kid you had these inklings of these like spiritual inklings of like we need to help them or or what i should do and then you were like this self-proclaimed atheist and like proud of it. And I think we all know those people who are like, oh no, I'm atheist. But God still sought you out and he still pursued you and he still went after you and he was still there loving you and guiding you, even though you were saying like, oh no, I'm I'm an atheist. I I'm good. And right. I just think it's so cool that God still, you know, I think sometimes 
And I know for me, sometimes I feel like, like, I guess most of my family are unbelievers and it's like, I don't feel like God is reaching them because they're so far gone. You know, it's like, oh, they're, they will never believe in God, but your testimony is so powerful with the fact of like, you didn't believe in God, but God was there. Like, no, I'm right here. And I'm, I want you and I still have you. And so I don't know. I just, I love that about your story so much that God still, you know, goes after the unbelievers hard and you still had that. You knew that there was something within you that was a spiritual pull and you knew that there was something special about it and that it wasn't, you know, that there was more. So I love that so much. Well, thanks Jay. That's, and that's, you know, and that's just kind of the beginning. I think the, uh, our testimonies are, it's not spectacular to me. It's really normal. And, uh, and, and one of the things that was interesting right after that was my dad would get, my dad, I, you know, I love my dad. He's 90 now. And, uh, we can talk about stuff we've never been able to talk about. Uh, and, uh, but my dad always got up early to go to work. He's like, who would want to hang out with three wild boys yeah. who raised themselves? And basically, you know, we were on our own running wild, you know, honestly, um, and enjoying every minute of it. And, uh, and so he would get up early because he loved working and he was a self-employed. He'd get up early and be gone before we got up. And so he was out of the house usually by 6.30, 6, 6.30 and gone and then didn't come back home till 6 or 6.30 and then mm. lay down in front of the television and watch the news. And uh, and uh, and so at, right after I became a believer, <clears throat> the summer was over, I'd moved back inside and um, I heard him getting up and it was just like a compulsion inside me, uh, like you were saying. I jumped out of bed. I ran out. He was just getting ready to go down the stairs. And I, I walked up to him and I gave him a huge hug. Hmm. Just gave him a huge hug and told him how much I loved him. Hmm. And that was really the first time I actually remember hugging him. You know, hmm. Like after I was maybe four, three or four. Uh, and that... Uh, no, I, I can't take any credit for it, but I, that uh, experience uh, had a huge impact throughout my whole family, my mom and dad and brothers and my grandparents, mm. uh, my aunt and uncles and everybody, because all of a sudden, well, it wasn't all of a sudden, it actually took years after that. But years, some years later, within a few years, uh, people were hugging one another mm. and they hadn't. Wow. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was, I, I just, I just said, uh, my mom sent me this picture the other day. It's like, oh my gosh, there's my grandma. And guess what? She's sitting on my lap and I'm hugging her like she's my girlfriend. You know, it's just like, oh, my grandma's here. I just love her so much. And uh, that, uh, I think that all stems from uh, liter literally me coming to know Christ and having Christ, Christ in me, uh, loving people around me. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, that for me was an uh, important moment in my Christian growth of just hugging my dad, uh, who, who probably thought I was completely nuts. <laughs> what the hell is he doing you know i gotta go to work yeah no time for a hug yes and and then i also made a lot of mistakes after that i i was pretty preachy and demanding i and i kind of think of myself now as I look back i said gosh oh my gosh i was a really christian bully i like wanted to bully people into believing and demand mm. that they believe and made my friends and mom read the books that and uh my brothers and <clears throat> you know it was i was kind of obnoxious really obnoxious mm. uh, actually and one of those obnoxious christian bible thumpers mm. yeah and, uh, yeah that's what i was going to ask you were you the first uh person in your family to accept jesus besides my besides my great uncle mm. 
and his mom and everybody hated them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so were you nervous to tell your family? Yeah, I was. I, I was because I knew because I, I already knew from my granddad, you know, how much mm -hmm. we hated. We hated yeah. believers, actually. Yeah. And looked down on them. Oh, my gosh. Our, we had some neighbors when I was a little kid across the street. Uh, and my folks, um, you know, really looked down on them. And my and my Christian great uncle, uh, he was so legalistic that my mom and, you know, they they really despised them because it's like they mm -hmm. wouldn't even let their kids go to church or I mean, go to movies. You know, they couldn't go to movies. Mm -hmm. They couldn't dance. If you did that, you were going to hell. And so like, well, why would you want to hang out with those people? Yeah. Why would you want, and, and why would you want to be one? Yeah. So, yeah, I was afraid to tell them and 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 I and for good reason, because they they didn't really like that idea too much. And. And, it, and they, you know, to their credit, they kept loving me and caring about me. And so even, and, 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 and in the long run, my brothers and their wives and my mom and dad mm. believed. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and I don't, not because of me, uh, because the Lord pursues us. Mm -hmm. Um, like Shay was saying about your family, he's like, oh my gosh, I, I would, the harder the nut, I think the better the case, the better, the, what, those are the kind of people I love hanging out with mm -hmm. because you know where they stand, you know, they're the, yeah. that's, that's, I, those are the really people I like. I would rather hang out with people like your, your hard nut atheistic family than, <laughs> uh, uh, Anyway, I, I, I just love those people. And so I think that's probably, I was telling Barb, I saw a guy today this afternoon. She goes, that guy is my kind of, I said, that guy is my kind of guy. I'm trying to rent a building. And she goes, well, why would you say that? And I said, just, just a normal average day. I would call him, you know, it sound, it'll sound bad, but low life, just a regular person, you know, who's mm -hmm. not super highly educated. They're not looking down their nose on me, they're a hard worker. They know they want to make money and survive and take care of the people they love. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, just, I, I just enjoy being with, and they can be super opinionated and they, they can hate me. It doesn't matter. It just, uh, I, I think that's, uh, those are all things that I just like about people. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. And can you remember Steve, when you finally did tell your, family that you accepted Christ? Do you remember what they said or was there nothing said or? You know, I don't actually remember that moment in time. I remember talking to my mom about it and, you know, and I remember, you know, I was probably not too blunt. And I probably actually didn't know what the heck I was doing. What, you know, that I would, I probably wouldn't say I accepted Christ or I, I believed I'd probably say, You know, I'm, you know, I'm reading the Bible. Mm, yeah. I, who's this Jesus, you know? Mm -hmm. He's different than anybody I've ever met. You know, he's not like those yeah. guys, the kids that go to Young Life at the high school that I went with. Uh, you know, he's, but now I want to talk to them. Uh, so I don't really remember a point in time, but I don't think I would have, it wouldn't be the standard evangelical. Oh yeah, I've read this prayer and, pr and prayed this prayer. Although I did do that, I did uh, uh, went to uh, I can't remember I think Campus Crusade or no what the, there was a thing Bill Bright did a thing on um, the four spiritual laws, you know mm -hmm. and somehow I found out about that and went to a class on that and they had the four spiritual laws tracks they were tracks you went through with people to lead them to the Lord and, and they were just basic gospel messages and so I, I you know I shared that with my folks and and my aunt and my brothers and it's like mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> let's go skiing you know yeah, yeah. Uh, and so you know i think i think part of uh i guess my testimony and probably as i look back on it a lot of the things i said really didn't weren't and probably clear and accurate and and i was confused 
And but the life of Christ in me was not. Mm -hmm. It was clear, yeah. clearer, clearer than my understanding and clearer than my words. Mm -hmm. In some ways, in some ways, uh, there, there was lots of flesh. Uh, but in other ways, there was, uh, that was, that was crystal clear that I had life and wanted to share life with other people, real mm -hmm. life and, and value. I remember my grandma after my, <coughs> my granddad died, sorry, um, we were talking and I'd gone over to her and she was, and she was talking about money or something, needing money or wanting money or whatever. And I said, well, talk to me, I'm rich. And she just looked at me and she goes, you know what? You really are rich, <laughs> Re really rich. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we had nothing then, you, you know, we didn't have a nipple. Uh, it, but she, I think she was recognizing that uh, the life that we share, mm -hmm. the, yeah. the, re the real life, of God and Christ in us uh, is a tremendous treasure, and the love that flows out of that uh, is priceless, actually. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I love that your testimony wasn't one magical big bang event because I think sometimes we feel like that, especially for new believers, to be like. I haven't had that moment yet. You know, I haven't had that huge burst of like, God is in me. So my whole life has changed. Mm -hmm. And I love that about your testimony of like, you felt him even when you, even before you even knew him, but then you still were reading the Bible and going to these things and, and still trying to find out who God was. And then even after you accepted him, you weren't perfect. You still made the mistakes and said the things because you're human, but you continue to pursue him as he was pursuing you too. And I love that because I think so many times, I mean, I felt that way of like, after I accepted Christ and I said the prayer and I was like, now what, you know, and, and I love how much your testimony is like, no, I, I knew there was something different and God led you right to him on a scenic route path we know mm -hmm. it wasn't a straight and narrow road mm -hmm. but then you accepted him and you still you know swerved around the path but he was still with you and so i think it's such an important message of you know god's still there and he still loves you but he still also allowed you to be human and there wasn't this you know big magical moment of like I accepted Jesus and in my whole life, everything was great and everything was wonderful and I never made mistakes. And I just love, I love that. And I love your honesty. So thank you. Thanks. And then I became a huge legalist. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, just... what, what made you go down that road, Steve? <laughs> well, I saw, I, you know, it's kind of, I'll tell you the, the flip, the good part of that is I didn't want to I didn't want to miss Christ. I didn't want to follow in any other Christian's footsteps that was, say, hypocrite. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I did, I, but I, you know, that was another thing that was a huge shift in me is I all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I wanted to hang out with Christians. And I'd never wanted to hang out with Christians before. I never mm -hmm. really want to hang out with anybody. Uh, but I want now I like I'm gonna I'm, I'm pursuing I'm finding Christians and hanging out with them and learning from them and you know a lot of times I sit there and do nothing because I didn't like I don't know anything about the Bible or I don't know anything mm -hmm. about what the guys are talking about but I'd hang out with them and, and so I ended up uh, I wanted a Bible besides this little marriage Bible and I was like oh my gosh I know I got to find the right Bible I got to get the right Bible mm -hmm. I had a I had a Volkswagen car that didn't run very good had to push it to start it at the time. And I was driving down the road and I saw I driving down a circle drive down here. And I saw this sign that said, Walt's Christian books. And so I whipped in there, parked so I could coast downhill and start and went in there. And there's this lady named Pat. And oh my gosh, she's a fireball. Uh, and, uh, and I said, I'm here. I just want a Bible. I don't want any notes. I don't want any commentary. I don't want anybody telling me what to believe. I just want like, plain. I just want the words of the Bible. I don't want to hear from anybody else. I want to be able to focus just on God and, and what he's saying. And she goes, oh, I got just the Bible for you. Well, it's a King James, uh, but it was just the Bible. I still have it. And I started reading that Bible. 
And uh, I, so I said, uh, she asked, said, well, what church you go to? I said, oh, I'm going over to the Nazarene church. And she, and so she, but she kind of quizzed me about my beliefs. And she goes, why are you going there? And I said, oh my gosh, I love the people there. Great messages there. The, the pastor's great. And there's college kids that are there. And she goes, but you don't believe like they do. And I said, yeah, I do. And she goes, no, you don't believe like they do. And she, and I go, yes, I do. And she, and she is like feisty. And <laughs> So that hit, I hit that I hit that off with her because uh, I'd grown up with feisty people and she and she goes no you don't and I said well what don't I believe that I'm why and she goes well those people believe you can lose your salvation I said mm. you're right I don't believe that mm. I I know Christ is in me there's no and I'm one with him I like I got that that I, my oneness with him like right off the bat that I'm one with him and what's true of him is true of me I there was never a question for me about that and uh, so but I started going to the church that Pat went to and that church was very legalistic and you had to do everything right and you had to have the right doctrine and you had to have the right teaching and you had to have the right training and you had to do communion right and and if you didn't you had to do relationships right and if you didn't do any of those things right you couldn't break bread or you couldn't get come and worship or mm. uh, it was uh you know like all sorts of very legalistic and so i jumped into legalism with both feet and um, you know i was in there at pat's funeral i went back to that church at pat's funeral and i was sitting there praying and uh thinking about how legalistic all those people were and how legalistic that belief system was and uh as i was sitting there uh, listening to the music and thinking i was thinking about how legalistic that system was and uh i heard this old voice in my head that say well steve do you know who the most legalistic person that ever been in this place was and i said well, it might have been pat <laughs> and the lord goes no i'm pretty sure it was you oh wow and I say, oh my gosh, you're so right. That's so right. I just totally jumped into legalism with both feet in the fire, trying to perform and please and mm -hmm. uh, and make God happy and like me more. Mm -hmm. and even though I was really convinced uh, of that I was one with him and that I was the bride of Christ, I really that the church and, and I, that we are one, uh, I became super legalistic and judgmental and hard hard on all the Christians around me and hard on all the unbelievers around me. Mm. So that was, a, and, and that was for quite a, quite a few years. And then, uh, can I keep yakking or are we out of time? No, no, please do. So, so one quick story, how my, my uh, <clears throat> starting to break out of legalism I would get together with one of my friends, Marion, and we'd get read the Bible once uh, once a week early in the morning before I went to work. And we were going through Galatians, and we were reading about Galatians two twenty, and um, and we were th and he, he really he was legalistic too, but not as not anywhere near where I was, uh, and uh, and so we were talking about that. And I'd gone home, and I went. Uh, up uh, josh was just a little tiny kid he was probably three or maybe three maybe four and i walked in the, in the kitchen and uh i noticed that he backed away from me after mm. i came home from marion's house he backed away from me mm. and, and didn't want to come close to me and it and it just dawned on me it's like oh my gosh i've got standards i've got standards for josh and for barb and for everybody in my life that are higher than gods and they're afraid of me and they're backing away from these this judgmental condom condemning part of me and then belief the you know belief of me that, that you know nobody could live up to my standards especially me uh and so that was kind of the the beginning of the breaking down of my legalism and wanting more reality and less and having to get things right mm. when i saw josh run away from me he's like oh my gosh that's heartbreaking oh i bet it was the very worst thing that i could imagine yeah, yeah.
did it take you a long time to get out of legalism then after that? I'm still, yeah, still is. <laughs> yeah, still is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, yeah, I did, but I, I had some, made some pretty great strides right then because that was super motivating to me. I wanted to uh, walk in acceptance. And so, and that's kind of when we started, a little bit after that, we met your dad and mom and uh, and that, and that we kind of, uh, to tie it into abiding life, uh, Barb and I were just wanting to know more and walk more with Christ. And, uh, mm. and she heard about uh, Chuck Solomon's thing and your dad and you guys had just moved to town. And so she said, uh, Hey, I'm going to call this, this place up there. They are, I heard they might be having a conference somehow. She heard about your dad's first conference he did in Denver and mm. I said, well, go for it. I may or may not go. I got I'm working. And uh, yeah. so she, so she called and uh, talked to somebody at the, I think Chuck Solomon's office where your dad was at the time. And uh, the lady said, well, um, Barb, Barb said, we really want to know more about walking with Christ. We just feel like there's something we'd like to know more of in our walk with Christ. And the lady said, well, you're having marital problems. And she goes, no, we just really want to know more about um, walking deeply, walking with Christ. And uh, she mm -hmm. goes, well, you're having like kid problems and she goes no we just really want to know more about walking with christ and he about financial problems you know no, or, you know you know sex problems no we just really want to walk you know we just really want to have okay. a deeper walk with christ and she goes well this new guy's coming from kansas he's just started this uh oh a seminar you know maybe that's what you could maybe that'd be helpful to you hmm. And so we went up there to the, your dad's first seminar in, in Denver. And, um, oh, uh, you know, I liked most of it. I was pretty critical and judgmental and uh, legalistic and, uh, and not looking for, uh, as my, this is my still my, my mode, I, I just want to follow Christ. I really, really want to follow a man. Uh, mm -hmm. But I remember after the second day, uh, we were going down the elevator with your dad and I think I told this story at his funeral. Uh, we were after sitting in that uh, seminar for two days, and uh, we were going down the elevator. And uh, and I told this to Barb on the way up the second day. And so I told your dad, I said, "So you know what really impresses me impresses me about you?" <laughs> and he goes, "No, what?" And I said, "Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing." I said, "But." Oh my gosh, I'm really impressed with Christ. Mm. I'm so focused on him because I hear about him and I just love hearing your message because it's about Christ and mm. it's not about you and you make fun of yourself and I just want to, and I <laughs> fall in love with Christ listening to you. <laughs> and so that's, that's kind of how your dad and I relationship started off. <laughs> You yelling at him in an elevator? I love it. Well, I wasn't actually yelling at him. I just told him I wasn't impressed. Yeah, I just wasn't impressed by him. And he, and you know what? He liked that. I bet he did. Because he wasn't there to impress me. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, I bet he loved that. I think that was a, a, a nice moment in our relationship that we could both uh, look back on and enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do I have time for one last? Yeah, question? you can ask him. Yeah. Um. So I have a question. Where are you with God now? After all of the legalism and everything else, where are you with God now? You know, it's gonna sound bad, but I'm right back at the beginning where I was started out, laying out there in that grass, looking up at the stars. I don't think that's bad. I think that's exactly where He wanted you. Yeah, worshiping, worshiping. Yeah, him and exactly. Walking with him and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, out of that whole process for me is, uh, I don't know a lot of things, and I'm learning tons of stuff. But one thing I really do know, and it'll, it sounds arrogant, I know, is that I really know how to walk with God. Mm -hmm. I, I have a relationship with Him that I wouldn't trade for anything because mm -hmm. He's in me, and I'm one with Him, and I'm. There's, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, remember when Paul, when Saul became a Christian and uh, uh, he had the vision at night and Jesus said to him, you know, like, 
Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he goes, well, how have I persecuted you, Lord? Mm -hmm. And he goes, you've, you know, like you've basically anything you do to touch the believers, anything you do to touch the church is me. And so it's, it's almost like that you've done it done to the least of one of these, you've done it to me. And it's not like it, it's, it's true that we actually are the body of Christ. It's not like we're an image of it. It's like we are, mm -hmm. we are one with him. And so I, I really enjoy walking in that awareness and imperfectly, of course. Mm -hmm. So, so I guess another, another thing, question, I think I'd like to throw to you, Shay, is like, I'm also really enjoying all my flaws and I'm enjoying living this life as a human crying and laughing and uh, with cancer in the body and holes in my bones and uh, not always enjoying it. Sometimes I'm whining about it. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I wouldn't want to come through this life. Uh, I was talking to one of my atheist friends and we were, and you know, like, the, how would you have the conversation like this with a, your atheist friend? And, sh and she says, uh, oh my gosh, there's, you know, it's kind of cool that you could have an experience of being eternal. And then that nothing on this earth could touch you, that you're perfectly, you can't be harmed, you can't be hurt. It's like right on. And like right on. Let's go a little further because you believe, you know, you believe. And, and uh, so she's, she's trying to take mushrooms or something to have this experience. I said, oh my God, you don't even need that. You can have a real thing and, yeah. and not be, have any, uh, you know, I'm so I'm confident of that. And, but I'm also, and the, the, the flip side of that is that I'm in a body, I'm in a, a body that's 100% human, just like Jesus. Mm. And I, so I'm only going to have it for a certain amount of time. I want to experience and be curious about everything he has for me in this body. Mm -hmm. right now, and with all the things that we all go through in this crazy year we've been through. Um, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I didn't die and miss this past year. Uh, mm that because it's so different and it's what a great opportunity uh, to walk with God in a different way in a mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. context and different environment. And, um, but so I guess I'm right where I'm at only I'm enjoying my flaws and the, mm -hmm. they'll sound bad, but my sins more in the fact that I get to, that it all leads to Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense to me. I, you know, when you were saying how when you first accepted Christ under the stars and then you went on all the other stuff, I just thought, man, you know, that's the thing. It's, it's so simple and just walking with him is so simple, but how many times do we add so much to it? You know, how many times yeah. do we just keep adding little things? No, I got to do this now. No, no, I got to do this now. No, I got to do that. And it's kind of cool. It's kind of done a full circle. Now mm -hmm. he's got you right back to just walk with me, Steve. That's, that's it. it. That's it. You know, and that's beautiful. I think that's. I wouldn't want to miss the whole process, though, like we were talking earlier. I think oh, absolutely that, whole, not. that whole process makes that moment of just walking with him uh, extremely valuable and precious to me. And I am. Like not willing to, uh, you know, like I, you would have to like break both my arms off and cut my legs off to <laughs> give me to want to go back into a legalistic belief system mm. or, or to even to think that I have to do anything to be pleasing to God. Uh, yeah. It would be uh, because that's become so, you know, I knew it initially, I really didn't know it. But I knew, but I now I've, it's like part of my being. It's like gravity. It's like that is one thing about my life that's uh, irrefutable. Mm -hmm. that, that's just a part of it. It'd be, it'd be like, uh, I don't know, the blood, the blood in your body is like part of it, become a part of me that mm -hmm. not uh, before without going through that process and being a super legalist person, I don't know that I'd have appreciation for grace and the mm -hmm. love of the Lord that I have now. Uh, yeah. And I, I know we've talked about this. I think God is so good at showing us contrast mm -hmm. and usually it's our, at least for me, it's a lot of my dumb choices I make, 
but he shows me how much he loves me in that. And really, I'm very, very happy you never went back into legalism because <laughs> I know for me, I, I would have never gone to with a lot of my problems because you wouldn't have been a safe person for me. Yeah, true. And so I really that, appreciate, I just appreciate is, the leading you took with the Lord. And, you know, well, thanks. I've enjoyed our relationship with that. You know, you mentioned contrast. And it just popped into my mind is like, I go to get um, these tests nowadays. I saw so like I go to get an MRI test for to see my bones and uh, tumors and stuff like that. And uh, what you said was so amazing. I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner. What they do is they inject you with contrast. Then they call it contrast, a contrast wow. solution. Hmm. And they inject you with this stuff that makes... Um, kind of reality show up clearer so it makes your bones show up clearer or makes your soft tissues show up more clear and they can do it in all sorts of different things different x-rays and scans and um, pet scans and and they so that contrast uh, is super important and i think you know maybe maybe the lord injects and i it would sound bad but i don't believe i, I think it's pro really possible uh, mm -hmm. Maybe he injects the contrast of legalism in us mm -hmm. at some point in our life and does his own uh, Holy Spirit scan. And we see how stable our bones are, or how our, what our real structure of Christ is. We right. see the reality of what we have in Christ because of that contrast has been injected. And it's like, all right, great. I see. I got the reality. I'm like, I am yeah. one with him. And nothing is ever going to change that there, you know, like I'm, you know, we were talking about the pandemic and the election and everything with Barb and I was like, you know, hang on just can we hang on a minute because, uh, you know, in a sense, I'm fearless. Mm -hmm. what, what can happen to us, you know, like, so exactly. the person we don't like gets elected. And so the whole country goes to hell. Right. So the whole, you know, so they throw all the Christians in Fort Carson. Yeah great i'm watching I'm, I'm excited to see how the gospel is going to explode yeah you know? uh and uh, so in the same so i think in a sense as i've walked in that uh that's grown for me that certainty and mm. in a sense uh i mean i'm afraid and insecure all the time but i'm also fearless in a sense mm -hmm. yes yeah. so, so I don't, that probably doesn't make sense, but it's true. No, it does it make is, sense. Yeah. It actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> but yeah, I just, well, I'm sure we're running out of time now, but I just want to say thank you, Steve, for your willingness to share all this. You know, a testimony is kind of personal too, you know, and I think some people probably have a hard time sharing it because it is so personal. So I, I do appreciate you opening up and sharing what you shared with us definitely talking and going into legalism you know that's <laughs> that's something probably most people don't want to talk about but i do appreciate you steve more than i can ever show you or tell you so likewise noah thank you and shay i appreciate you guys and just admire your walk with the lord and your how genuine and authentic and candid you always are i'm always following in your footsteps like oh my gosh that's so beautiful and and now you get to cry it's like oh my gosh wow <laughs> now we can uh, uh enjoy that privilege of crying together is mm -hmm. wonderful so yeah. thank yes. you guys and uh, hope you. yep and we'll do another one soon i think the next one we'll do is uh having 100 percent jesus in us we're going to talk about that and now I just want to share on the website now we have the devotional. It's not readable. We, it just never worked out to, it just, it was just a mess. So we just made it now where you can listen to the devotional now on the website. So of course me as being dyslexic, I totally love it. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying it. I'm using it. I, I never used it before. So I'm enjoying and, and, it. And so. what's the name of it? Uh, it, this one will be, it's My Weakness for His Strength, Volume 1, 
volume one okay and right now we're having volume two what would you call that recorded. red recorded yeah. red someone's reading it so oh, nice it's gonna be cool so I'm, cool. I'm excited so all you dyslexic out there you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. Thank you so much for the listeners. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Shay. And just thank you for your hearts, guys. Thank you, Noah. Thanks for the privilege. All right. Goodbye now.